Hi everyone and welcome. In this review note, we're going to look at different ways that we can consume storage that's being presented out onto our network from a Windows server. Right now I'm logged on to a Windows server machine that is a member of my domain. It is not the file server that we're going to access. First method I'm going to demonstrate is from File Explorer. All I'm going to do is in the address bar, enter in the UNC path to the share. This is the path to a share that was created in a previous video. Just press enter and I now have access to that share. That easy. There is no drive letter that's created and mounted from this particular resource. If I go back over to this PC, we can see that that path is now gone and I would have to go back to that if I wanted access. Second method I'm going to demonstrate is what if we do want to mount whatever that shared resource is as a drive letter so that it can be accessed persistently. I'm going to right click on network and map a network drive. I can specify my drive letter. I'm going to choose P for this. And then I would specify the UNC path in the folder. This is the path to a share that we created in an earlier video. A couple of items here. One is the checkbox for reconnected sign-in. What this will do is allow that mapping to persist between sign-ins if we want to do that. The second one is connect using different credentials. If something happens that I do not have permission with my current user to access that remote resource, by selecting this checkbox, I'll be presented with the ability to put in a different set of credentials, which will allow me to get access to the resource. Don't need to do that. I do have permission for this. Simply connect finish and this now opens to this path data 2 on this server and drive letter P and close that window but we'll notice now that in network locations we have this drive mapped off to that remote resource. Third option I'm going to look at is something using a command that's been around for quite a while which is the net command. I'm going to run this from PowerShell although this also runs from the command prompt. Command is pretty simple, give you a quick explanation. Net command, the functional option is use. This is the drive letter I'm going to map to, and then this is the UNC path that's going to go out and connect onto that remote resource. Hit enter, it's connected. If I just use the net use command on its own, it will show us what drives we have mounted. Here is P that I did previously from File Explorer, and here is Q, which is the one that I just did now, and that's all there is to doing that. Last option I'm going to show is how to connect from PowerShell. I'm going to clear the screen off so that we have a little bit clearer view. Okay, so the commandlet is new PS drive. We have to give it a name. If we use a single letter, then it's going to try to mount to that letter for the drive. We have to specify a provider with new PS drive. We can either connect to a file system or we connect to the registry. And with file system, in this particular case, we want to use that as the word. What Persist is going to do is make the mounted drive available outside of the PowerShell session. If we don't put in Persist, then that's only going to be available internally. One thing to be aware of is if you're running PowerShell using run as administrator, persist is not going to make that drive available outside of that session. Root is going to specify where we're going to mount from. And in this case, we have the UNC path to the data for sure that's over on our server. That's now connected. We can see that we have R. And just to see that we also have R mounted up in File Explorer so we can access that particular resource from here as well. That's that persist option that I was talking about a second ago. Those are four different ways that you can consume a shared file resource from Windows. That's a wrap for the video. Hopefully this is helpful for you and we'll see you next time.